virtual um, the virtual auctions? Is it is it something that, um, as as you've said, you guys have sold more? So, what are the advantages for the consumer and and um, in, in in them engaging in these um, auctions? Probably time and convenience. just would like you to you know give us insights uh, pre-covid how were things working and how has it impacted how has covid rather impacted um your business well covid's actually helped a lot uh to me we we were trying desperately to to get our buyers uh online uh, as much and as quickly as we could um and it was taking us years and, and millions and millions to do so uh, COVID-19 did it for free in three months. Uh, it was very, very, very good. It was, <laughs> we we managed to get our entire system and most of our entire clientele portfolio uh, online within the first three months of COVID. So we've probably sold more properties online through our virtual auction platform, more online in the last 18 months than we have in the last 11 years. Sure. Um, it's like how, how experts have been saying that, you know, a good businessman never wastes a crisis. So it was time to strike and, and really get them digitized. So I really want us to talk also about how or the advantages that you guys have seen, especially with um, the virtual um the virtual auctions is it is it something that um, as as you've said you guys have sold more so what are the advantages for the consumer and and um, in, in in them engaging in these um, auctions probably time and convenience um, mm-hmm. if you trust the brand and you trust the technology um, some of the biggest sales we've had in fact we auctioned off a, a three hundred and thirty year old wine farm uh, that was sold online. Uh, to to a gentleman outside the country. Uh, convenience is probably one, uh, time another. Um, you can do a lot more instead of taking a couple of hours or three or four or five hours out of your day driving, going to a live auction, registering. You can now do it uh, from the palm of your hand on your smartphone. And for some people who at heart, you know, um, love the auction feel or love um, the spirit that auction has because um, auctions are, have become notorious, you know, for, for, for the lead auctioneer, you know, hitting um, the... Um, I forgot what you guys call it, but hitting that hammer, you know, and everybody clapping, you know, all of those beautiful things. uh, I would call them beautiful because, you know, when you look and think of a traditional auction, you think this is absolutely amazing to see. Do you guys try and incorporate those things even on the online ones? Absolutely. It's all about the user experience. And, you know, the more more fun people have, the more you engage with them, the the longer they'll stay and the the longer they'll bid. Um, The number one reason... uh, most people attend auctions are because they're fun. You know, nobody yeah. likes a dull, toneless, boring auctioneer. Um, whether you auction off wine farms or townhouses or commercial buildings uh, or shopping malls, um, you know, it's, it's, it's a lot of money um, and you, you need to look after the client. You need to be careful of your, your user experience. And, you know, the more comfortable and the more engaging you can make your bidders feel, the longer they'll stay there. Mm. And let's talk about um, the ordinary Joe on the street. Who would want to be part of an auction and who would want to acquire property using auctions? Um, how does one go about it? Because from, from um, the myths that already exist, people believe that auctions are for, for the wealthy and they are not for everybody. So would you say that it's something that everybody can engage in? Well, we had an auction today with about 30 properties that came under, mm-hmm. uh, under the hammer on the block. And we had everybody from the man in the street to the high net worth individual, to the corporate, to the listed property fund. It was really a, a complete rainbow nation of bidders, so to speak, right across the floor. You know, whether it's a, a townhouse, commercial building, a farm, a game lodge, uh, a shopping mall, there is literally something for everyone. It's not It's not for the super wealthy. Um, it, it is literally from everything. We had bids from 
250,000 up to 100 million today. Hmm. We're talking big amounts there, but of course we are talking property, so that that's the, the, the field that we play in. So let's talk a bit about um, the disadvantages of having it online. Are there any specific disadvantages that you have noted that um, you see that, oh, this is a, the biggest downfall of us um, having it online? Not actually. So we have your, your virtual auctions are online and both live at the same time. Um, and we, we looked into it heavily when we, when we bridged the the gap or jumped off the bridge, so to speak, on level five, pretty much this time last year. Uh, there are no disadvantages. In fact, we've only benefited uh, as a company, as a real estate auction business, uh, over the last two years. Um, we didn't see any any detrimental um, issues at all. In fact, you know, when weighing up the pros and cons, it, it was a huge benefit to us. Our target market is a lot bigger. It's a lot wider. Uh, you can you can literally reach anybody at the moment because everyone has a smartphone. Sure, sure. Um, and for you, what would you what would you say denotes like um, a successful um, a successful auction, a successful auction process? Like how it starts um, all the way to the bidding, as well as maybe the rounding up of maybe you now acquiring this um, this asset that you have got in this case, the property. Successful auction, I would say, it's the quality of your stock. The quality of your real estate, mm. uh, setting the reserves on auction very, very carefully, make sure your sellers are realistic, uh, and attracting the market to your platform. Uh, you know, you're only as good as your last auction, as we, as most auctioneers will always say. Uh, having a very, very in-depth, successful uh, auction marketing campaign is absolutely critical. But, you know, as with any product, you must have the quality product at the right price and the market will dictate what that price will be. Yeah. No, definitely. Um, thank you so much for, for that insight. I will then just quickly um, jump to our social media interaction and also just ask you a quick question here because once you have acquired a property and now you, you are in position of this property that you landed at an auction, um, would you rather, we asked this to our Facebook uh, family, by the way, so we asked them, would you rather... I live next to a highway or have noisy neighbors. And we had Mikobi in Zani who says she prev she prefers noisy neighbors. She says at least they'll play my playlist at some time and eventually they, they'll get tired, unlike traffic. <laughs> and then Sonia says she rather live next to a highway. So she has an uh, the, the exact opposite. She says she would rather live next to a highway because it ends up becoming white noise. I guess she gets used to it. And she says noise na noisy neighbors have irregular noise levels which go up and down and is disturbing. So so, so if, if I were to pose the question to you, Joff, which one would you rather have? Noisy neighbours. Uh, <laughs> you can always invite noisy neighbours over for a braai uh, or a glass of wine or a beer. You and can't, you become you part of that traffic. If you live next to the National, the N1 or the M1 in Johannesburg, that, that noise will never stop. <laughs> well thank you so much for that um thank you so much for all the love that we are receiving on social media and as usual those green hearts are coming in very quickly um as usual we have Pauline Nkosi who has come and said you know she's marking the register and saying good evening to everyone and giving us those green hearts thank you and keep the comments coming in keep your questions coming in Joff is here to answer any questions that you might have around property auctions and any concerns comments please do send them to us so that we can filter to them before we complete our conversation tonight. And if you just joined us, we are talking about how the pandemic has changed um, the property auction space. So, um, uh, Joff, I would like to now bring it home for the consumer and say, um, how what how does the process look? If 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 myself as Dumi would like to start, you know, um, coming to auctions, you know, uh, experiencing the whole process, what do I need to do? What are the docu What's the documentation that I require? Do I need to have hard cash? Um, how, how how does the process work? Well, auctions are non-suspense. So you either need to have the cash in the bank uh, or you need to have your bank manager holding your hand sitting next to you, uh, mostly for real estate, uh, which is what you need, a uh, pre-approval. Um, I would suggest go to the South African Institute of Auctioneers website, which is auctioneering.coza. All auctioneers uh, have to be registered uh, as a legal entity uh, and everyone has listed their auctions there. So go there, have a look around. Attend as many auctions as you can, watch as many as you can online, and just, you know, dip your foot in the water. And the more you attend, the more it is you'll feel. 
And with, with regards to the documentation, you so if my bank manager has approved, we've got a pre-approval from the bank in terms of um, um, a property, <clears throat> then we can then start the conversation, get the conversation going. Are there registration fees? Because um, it's important that um, our, our property buyers get to know this thing. So registration fees, any possible ones that um, they should look out for if there is something or red flags that they should look against or guard against. On real estate auctions, you always have to have your FICA documents at hand. Uh, whether you have them saved on your phone uh, with a photograph, you must have proof of residence, you must have proof of ID. Uh, depending on the size of the auction, whether it's commercial real estate or, or smaller residential real estate, uh, some auctioneers do charge a refundable registration fee. Uh, smaller auctioneers don't. Uh, but as long as you have your FICA documents at hand, you are legally then allowed to bid. Hmm. Um, and with the, the red flags, what red flags do I look for? When do I know when to stop? Or when do I know that there's something fishy with this deal and I need to start uh, putting some brakes on it? When your wife fades next to you, stop bidding. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Um, <laughs> excuse me. I'll say know your budget. Uh, I would put a, put a figure in your head, add on one more bid, and then I would stop. You never want to overextend yourself. You need to be careful. Do your homework. Uh, speak to the auctioneer. Download the, the conditions of sale. Download the auction rules. Download the auction investor pack on that particular asset. Go to the viewing. Uh, you know, you can't, you, you shouldn't bid on something that, that you haven't seen before unless you're either very, very rich or very rich or you're very emotional about the asset and you want it at no cost. Um, understand that auctions are foot to us. There's no cooling off period for auctions. Mm. Uh, I would say phone the auctioneers, do your homework. It's it's like buying a car. You're not going to buy a car that you've never driven. Uh, you're not going to buy a car that you've never sat in. It's the same for a house. Um, it's a it's a personal buy. It's an emotional buy. And you you really need to get your, your, your fingers under the carpet, so to speak, get them dirty and, and have a look around and do your homework. You just mentioned something there and you said cooling off period. Can you please just explain that? Because one of the questions that we have is that what happens once you, your, your, your bid has been accepted? Do you then walk out there with the keys and walk straight into the house? What, what is the process um, uh, and what, what does the cooling off period entail? Well, there is a normal cooling off period with, with estate agents. There is not that period on auctions. Once the hammer falls, uh, mm -hmm. the property is literally yours. Uh, sometimes, uh, most cases... Uh, with uh, corporate and private auctioneers and professional auctioneers, there is a confirmation period of anything between five and 14 days uh, where the buyer and seller, and particularly the seller, will either consider your bid uh, or confirm it as quickly as possible. It's the normal process that one would handle with, uh, with a professional estate agent, except that okay. the sales process uh, is a lot faster. What a professional estate agent could do in six months, an auctioneer will literally do in 60 seconds. So it's a lot faster. However, the process uh, of how you register, how you would submit your bid, whether it's in writing, which is technically a bid, or whether it's verbally, uh, is exactly the same. It's just a lot faster with an auctioneer. So you know, once again, make sure you don't overextend yourself. Uh, it is exactly the same process. After confirmation of your bid, uh, all the paperwork and the documentation does go to a conveyancer. Um, you would then have your uh, deposits paid. Uh, the balance of the deposits would be payable uh, on registration of transfer. And obviously before that, you would apply for your clearances. So it, it is a normal property transfer transaction, other than the fact it's on steroids. <laughs> it is definitely on steroids, and one of the one of the myths that surround auctions is that uh, the property is not wanted. They are like unwanted children, and this this might not be so true. And I want you to Google that that myth this tonight, and and tell the people why you believe um, that this is not the case. Many people believe that you know um, auction properties, property that people didn't want, you know, people uh, deceased estates. Uh, we were just talking about deceased estates last night, so they they think that th it's it's unwanted property. Property and you said it's it's foot steward, so you take it as is. So people believe normally that I'd rather not go to an auction. So um, uh, do you believe that this is true or there's some element of truth in this? And if if you've got an opposing point, you, you can mention it. So it's, a, it's an old legacy that, that 
auctioneers and, and auction professionals have carried around for, for decades. And it's mm. probably because of the sheriff auctions, uh, <laughs> which are held uh, for legal protocols and for legal process. Uh, it's yeah. absolutely not the case. The legacy will always be there. But you must understand, out of the five, 600 auctions a year that we conduct, 95% of all of those are private instructions. Private, oh. private individuals like yourself, uh, corporates, uh, listed property funds, REITs, uh, and you know, very wealthy trusts. We don't mm. <clears throat> necessarily focus on legal auctions. There are auctioneers okay. that do, uh, but it's it's a case of would you rather have one buyer giving you one bid or one price for your assets, or would you rather fill a room with fifty or a hundred buyers, create competitive bidding? The bidding always ascends, it never descends, uh, and your price goes up. That's that's the difference on an auction. Mm. Hmm. Um, very informative. So I, I really just want to also speak about this because then the, here's myself and I have this beautiful wine farm I would like to auction off somewhere in the French Hook. Uh, I want to know how do I know that an auctioneer is legitimate? I mean, we um, um, knowing High Street Auction Company uh, and its legitimacy, knowing that it's been there for years. How do we know? You know, there's a lot of scammers these days and a lot of chance takers. How does one know if they would like to um, put a property uh, up for auction? How do they know that this is legit and they are not going to be done in? I think with any industry, you know, there are rogue elements involved. Uh, it's it's difficult not to have them, but but in any in any industry, you have them. Make sure they have a FFC. A fidelity fund certificate, make sure they are members um, <clears throat> of the State Agency Affairs Board, or in this case, the, the, the new uh, property practitioners, guys that have just come out and just been formed, make sure they are members of the South African Institute of Auctioneers, or SIA. Um, if you don't see those accreditations, if you don't see those stamps, uh, beware. Uh, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't touch them with a barge pole. You must have a professional, licensed, experienced auctioneer, <clears throat> and now it is law. You have to have that as per the, the new Consumer Protection Act. It's both for your protection and for ours. Mm -hmm. And, and that, that protection is very important. And um, you, we've spoken to both the... the well, we've spoken rather to the process if I want to buy a house from an auction. And if I want to, and I've, I've already um, ascertained that the person I want to, um, the auctioneer is legit, what do I need to ensure that um, I get the house on the market and get it sold via auction? I would say professionalism. Um, mm. See how long the auction company's been around. Uh, look at their results. Uh, look at their memberships. Um, you know, if you're unsure... Just log on to the SIA website, log on to the EAAB website, uh, do a Google search. Uh, if there are any bad elements or rogue elements about that specific individual or auctioneer, uh, it'll pop up. Um, but professional accreditations and professional memberships are absolutely crucial uh, for the credibility of both uh, your assets uh, as well as the potential sale. But now this is in the context of me actually selling the property. What documentation do I need that I will present to the auctioneer to say, um, this is the wine farm I was talking about earlier, and <clears throat> I would like to sell it. I would like to put it on auction. Is there specific documentation, um, uh, proof of, of ownerships, and, and um, any other documentation that I would need to show that the property, first of all, is mine, and then I have the right to sell it? Well, most, most importantly, on a wine farm, you probably start the discussion of a good bottle of wine uh, <laughs> somewhere under the vineyard uh, over a long afternoon in Stellenbosch. Um, no, obviously, title deeds are mostly important. Uh, proof of ownership, uh, which which most all auctioneers, uh, uh, and in this case, uh, estate agents as well, will be able to find on their systems. Proof of ownership, uh, the history. Of, of that uh, piece of real estate, in this case, the history of the wine farm. Uh, and then you'd go into a lot more detail. Uh, the viticulture of the vines, how old the vines are, the type of soil, uh, water rights. Um, you know, the list goes on and on and on. If you're talking about commercial assets or commercial real estate, you want to see the leases. You want to see the length of the leases. Are there triple net leases? You'd want to see the plans of the building. If it's just a residential property or your own house, 
once again, you want to see those title deeds. You want to see the SG mm. diagrams. You also want to see the plans of the property. Um, utility bill. You want to see your rates and taxes bills. Find out how much you're paying. Are there rear rates and taxes? Uh, is there an issue with the billing? Um, all, all of those types of descriptions and features uh, on any real estate asset uh, is what you want. The bigger the quantum on the property is usually uh, indicative of how much uh, administration or paperwork you would need on it. Obviously, a townhouse uh, or residential one house is a lot simpler, a lot easier to auction. The more complicated ones, uh, retail, shopping malls, buildings, uh, wine farms, it does tend to get more complicated and your due diligence pack is a lot bigger. All right. Thank you so much. So much insight um, from the conversation tonight. And I, I, I'm I, sure everybody who is watching is already starting to, you know, um, start that appetite, you know, start going to those auctions. And just for, even if it's just for the experience. And I absolutely love the fact that you guys can now have them online. So it's accessible to everyone and to all categories of customers. Thank you so much for joining us tonight, Joff, and have a pleasant evening. Absolute pleasure. Thanks for having us. Thank you so much. The conversation was extremely robust and I'm sure that everybody um, to who was watching us tonight has learned a thing or two. I know that I'm taking away good nuggets of how to go into this um, how to go into this space and how the pandemic has really changed it. It's made it accessible to all of us and we can even, uh, as a Joe and everybody walking on the streets, you can actually start taking up um, that, um, that option to buy and get and acquire property. Thank you so much for joining us for tonight's podcast episode. It was absolutely informative. And until we see you again tomorrow as we talk mortgage bonds and how consumers can save money right here on the Private Property Podcast on the Facebook page, 7 p.m. Make sure you don't miss it. Put your reminders now and make sure that you are here. Thank you so much for also joining us on the Twitter spaces. We really, really appreciate you. Have a good evening. Thank you so much. Thank you, brother. Stay safe.